Neither the president nor Ambassador Bolton were aware of the Justice Department action prior to the dinner. Neither of them were aware, you're saying now? Correct. Shouldn't they have been aware? No, I don't think so. It's an interesting coincidence, Trish. And what it, what it speaks to, I think, to me, is, is the uh, problem we're having more broadly with China of their bad behavior. That was the assistant to the president for trade and manufacturing policy, Peter Navarro, telling me that the president and his team were totally unaware of the arrest of Meng Wanzhou. She's the CFO of that giant Chinese telecom company, Huawei, the largest telecom company in the world. The arrest was made just hours before Trump and the president and Chinese President Xi Jinping agreed to a 90-day trade truce. New tonight, that executive now facing charges of fraud, accused of attempting to evade U.S.-Iranian sanctions for five years and now facing up to 30 years in a U.S. prison. The coming collapse of China author Gordon Chang, he joins me right now. And, and Gordon, I, it was all a coincidence. I mean, I just find it kind of amazing that they're going out and arresting this woman who's a big, big deal, right? She's Especially in much. Chinese society. And they never bother to tell the president while he's sitting down to dinner with Xi Jinping. Well, she's royalty in the communist system. But it could be a coincidence, Trish. And the reason is that China's challenge to us is multifaceted, which means our response to Beijing is also multifaceted. And of course, some of our responses are going to bump into other ones. Mm -hmm. And as China poses more and more of a challenge, this is going to happen more often. Mm -hmm. So they did the right thing, in your view. I mean, it, look, I think it's not just my hunches. It's not just <laughs> sanctions that she was violating. But uh, you have some real concerns there about intellectual property theft and espionage. Oh, clearly. Well, Huawei you know, didn't become the biggest telecom equipment manufacturer in its segment by itself. It did it because it stole Cisco technology and the technology of other companies, and, and Beijing really pushed it around the world. So this is really And they're still challenge. stealing, right? I mean, and to the tune of $600 billion a year, Gordon. Well, it's hundreds of billions of dollars a year. We don't know whether it's four, five, or six, or whatever. Mm -hmm. But the point is, when you look at all of the surveys and the studies, such as the Commission on the Theft of U.S. Intellectual Property and the U.S. Trade Representative's report of this March, they all point to hundreds of billions of dollars a year. So if we don't deal with this now, right, if we just say, okay, we're going we're gonna to keep allowing people to do business in China, and a lot of these CEOs don't really care because they're too obsessed with quarterly and right. annual profits, so they, uh, they want to show that they're active in the Chinese marketplace. If we don't actually say, hey, guys, not a good idea, because 10 years from now, your company may be out of business because they've stolen all your technology and thus replaced you, what are the consequences? Well, the consequence is that we become essentially a third world economy, exporting agricultural products and scrap metal, maybe some natural resources. That's just completely unacceptable. You know, the theft of U.S. intellectual property is an existential threat to the American economy. And by the way, the Chinese look at this, you know, they say this is not an economic issue. They look at the whole concept of comprehensive national power. Mm -hmm. That's a Soviet idea which they take. That means if they attack our economy, they think they're attacking our society and our military. You brought up the Soviets, so let me ask you. You think about what Ronald Reagan was able to accomplish with the Soviets, the dismantling of the Soviet Union. If Trump is truly successful with China, and it may take another four years for him to actually really be able to accomplish something like this, could we actually see some kind of equivalent? Yeah, I mean, we certainly could, because right now the Chinese economy is fragile. The confidence in China is really low because Xi Jinping is, is blamed for starting a trade war with mm -hmm. the United States prematurely. So he's in a lot of, he's in a difficult position. And that means a lot of manufacturers right now are thinking about leaving China. So this is a really consequential time, and President Trump needs to succeed. Gordon Chang, thank you so much. And I would just add to that, don't forget, everyone, we are their biggest customer. They actually need us more than we need them. Without us, what have they got? We fuel their economy because we buy all their stuff. Now, a lot of people will tell you, oh, well, you know, they hold all our debt. And yes, they do. But don't forget, they want to get repaid, right? If they were to say, okay, we're going to, you know, not buy any more debt from you, or what if they actually had to deal with us saying, maybe we're not going to pay you the full amount on that debt, then what happens? then they're left with a whole lot of paper that's not worth a whole lot. So in other words, this is a relationship, I would just say, that works both ways. Don't forget that, China.